What better way to show you Mini's assisted driving plus while the Mini is driving by itself? I have to just keep my eyes on the road. Hands don't have to be on the wheel, which is amazing. This is the little sensor or camera right there that will actually detect if my eyes are on the road. Of course, it just got angry at me because it blocked it. So, you know, this is a this is a system that does really focus on safety, as you can imagine. A lot of sensors make this possible. And so one of the things that's really interesting, if you go to assisted view here, you'll see what the car sees. You know, you see the cars, of course, next to you, where they are. You see the car that I'm locked in on in front of me. What I want to show you really quickly is some of the settings. And this is where I think people will not use this system because they're not familiar with it or it's sort of buried, which is a shame because, listen, I'm in massive traffic right now in Chicago. And actually, this is outside Chicago and heading into Chicago. And I don't want to stop and go this thing. Why would I want to do that? This is the benefit of having an electric car or an automatic. I drive manuals almost all the time if I can. But for commuting, this is really, really a great solve for the typical stop and go traffic. So a couple things, I think for one, if you dive into some of the settings, it's important to know like this is all possible on minis now, which is pretty, pretty damn cool. Uh, speed warning, this stuff, I think a lot of people get super upset about to some degree. You can turn all of it off, which is of course important to note. Um, you know, let's actually take a look at the speed warning. You know, first off, make sure it's off. If you wanna have something turned on, you can certainly do that, um, but it all is relatively, I would say, uh, intuitive. Now, driving is where things get fun. Speed limit assist, again, this is another thing that in the, in the EU and UK, people are so upset about this because it's mandatory. In the US, we don't have it mandatory at all, which is awesome. Um, but one of the things that's really nice about this system is I can adjust how I use cruise. So for instance, if I'm going, let's say 65, and I press up all the way, sort of the second indent, I can define how I want it to, how far I want it to go up. Um, and this is only when cruise is set on the actual speed limit. I have to preface this. So you'll see a little speed limit and you'll see the word set underneath it. You click that button and suddenly you are going the speed limit. And then if you hit it once, it goes five. And if you hit it twice, it goes 10 over, I've got that set to 10. So it's a nice little way to keep track of the speed. And of course you can speed if you want, if that's what uh, the uh, situation is called for. So that's awesome. So route control, uh, cornering speed, this is when you're actually in cruise. You can go fast, which you can see that's the setting I have. Lane guidance with navigation, assist you in taking exits when navigating. Yeah, that's pretty damn cool as well. You do have to use this as part of the internal navigation, which is I would say generally awesome. Um, disc, distance control, this should be a button on the steering wheel. They, it's not anymore, it should be over here, it used to be. Uh, you find it in this setting right here. I don't like that personally, but all good. I see, I get it, I understand why. I think it's a bad decision. You can switch the whole thing off and just go straight to cruise, by the way, for those who like it old school. Um, and then automatic lane change. This is one that I think is, it's been around for a while with BMWs and the cars. You simply just hit this, hit the turnstock right there and you don't press it all the way. You just sort of give it the slight tap so it you know, blinks three times and your car will go into that lane assuming there's nothing in front of it or, or you know, sort of in its way. Um, a really nice feature. Assisted Driving Plus, turn it on. That's what this is. That's how I'm sitting here just enjoying myself talking to you about all this software. Um, and then assisted view, we're going to talk about that in a second, uh, notifications. This just gives you sort of the, the detail around the, the route planning navigation. One of the things that's interesting is if you're using CarPlay, the sort of the, the expanded version of the navigation, what it shows you, which I can't really show you that clearly here, unfortunately with the camera, that's, that's available only on, um, traditionally it was on Apple Maps. Now it's actually available on Google Maps as well, which is great. And of course it's available on the, the, the built-in system. Uh, and finally, as we started this whole process, assisted view. So assisted driving info will appear in front of other content, meaning when I go into assisted view or sort of go into assisted driving, this actually pops up. I have it turned off, but it is a nice feature if you're starting to use this because it gives you a little bit of reassurance as to what actually is happening around you. Um, that's something that 
for BMWs that actually shows in the cluster. There is no cluster on new minis, so uh, that would show here. So that is a really quick look at some of the assisted driving settings and assisted driving itself in the new Mini Countryman. Of course, this system is more or less the same in the Mini Cooper. It does not have assisted driving pro in the same way. This will actually drive hands-free uh, up to um, insert miles per hour here because I can't remember it, uh, which is pretty impressive given the fact that until very recently, Mini's only had adaptive cruise at all. So really, really nice features in the new Mini definitely worth checking out and in my opinion if you have traffic like this it's worth checking the box if you like this video please give us a like and of course subscribe we have a lot more coming